This is the engine sitting on the floor. I'm going to start the process of disassembling the engine now by removing my heads. First off, I have to get the remaining throttle body fuel rails uh, assembly off the top of the engine. What I have done, this is the rubber boot that's on top. Take the two bolts on the top and bottom, you loosen them up, pull them bolts out of the way. Then the third bolt here toward the inner center of the um, engine is the bolt that holds it to the throttle body. Now once you get to the throttle body, you pull out the front injector first. So when the front injector comes out and then you rotate it towards you, which is um, toward the uh, alternator cover side, and then you can pull out the rear injector. And that in case will allow you to lift the whole entire body right up out of there. Mark your connections on the inside before you disassemble them. Before pulling out the injectors, you have to take this connector here off which is by that screw right there, that's the connector and that will allow you to turn the throttle body toward the alternator side in order to get out the rear injector. This is something simple but could create problems for you if you really don't pay attention to it. Note that the fuel lines actually go toward the rear of the engine so when you pull this out and you turn it that you know which way it goes back in. The Schrader valve will always be to the right side of the engine where your water pump and also where your thermostat housing is at. So make sure that you have the fuel lines going to the back so you get the injector so when you put it back in the injectors will go into the right cylinder and you won't have a problem. The next thing I'm going to do is pull the thermostat housing off. To do that you have to remove the two screws from the top of the housing. And if you look right in here you'll see two open slots. There's a slot here and a slot here. There's a piece of plastic that goes between the cylinder head and the thermostat housing. Same thing on this side, piece of plastic in the center, that's the black that you see. And then there's O-rings on the inside of this one and this one. So when you pull this thermostat housing out, those O-rings is what keeps that sealed up. As you can see, there's one O-ring, there's the other O-ring. And be careful of the gasket. Right now what I've done is loosen the bolts up to the coil packs on the rear and the front. Pull them out and pull out the spark plugs so that way there you have access to be able to get your covers off. As a side note, when you remove these coil packs, notice that you have one short bolt and one long bolt. The front cylinder, the plug, actually faces toward the rear of the cylinder, rear of the bike so you know that that's the way this one goes in. When you pull the rear cylinder off you also have a sorry a long and a short bolt and again the connector is facing toward the rear of the vehicle so this way here you won't get them fandangled or wonder why it won't fit back in there but that's why. Connectors go toward the back of the bike. What I have done now is I loosened up all the bolts on the cam covers and the head covers on both sides once they're loose you can just take and lift this off now that will expose your chains and then the cover comes off right with that like that be careful of your gasket as you can see sorry about the camera but uh, you don't want to rip any of your gaskets lay them straight off to the side so you know where they go this is the top where the timing chain comes over top of your cams and your cams are seated in the top of the heads front, rear. Everything looks real nice and clean. Now what I have done is that I've loosened all the bolts up on the alternator cover so I can pull my alternator cover off. A good close up look what the alternator cover is now removed. Remember that when you remove the alternator cover off this thing that the stator magnets are inside your housing so when you pull it off it's going to have a little bit of resistance just pull it off you once you break the magnetic field it'll just come right off in your hands be careful not to drop it
Okay, now what I'm about to show you is how to get the front cylinder at top dead center. Now, you take the, your main crank and you turn it counterclockwise. If you look, right in here you'll see a little tiny little ball on the casting. And then if you look straight up here you'll see a little dimple. That dimple and that little ball when lined up is top dead center but you gotta make sure that you use your front cylinder on the front cylinder I have a top dead center tool if you don't have a tool you could actually use a pencil and put the eraser in down in first then as you turn it counterclockwise your pencil will rise in this case, it's the center pin on the top dead center tool, it rises. And then I can lock it in once I'm on top dead center. What I want you to notice is, on the gears on the cams, there's a line in one dot, a line in two dots. Okay? One, two. Let's go over here to this one. And then you have three and four. Then I'm going to tell you what gear, I mean, yeah, what gear goes to the cam and where they belong. Now, it's easier to see on this one, but you see the IN and the EX? Well, them are your ports from your valves. Inlet valve, exhaust valve. Okay? It's critical that you make sure you get your chains lined up on the correct in and exhaust over here you can see the little dimple and over here there's a little dimple that's on the gear along with the IN on this side with the dimple and the EX and the dimple on this one now, this is the rear cylinder. You can see the EX and the IN with the dimple. But on the front, you cannot see it because it's on the back side. So you've got to make sure that you get your chains lined up properly. How do you line your chains up properly? Well, it's funny. See the little copper little um, link? And here's another copper little link. And if you look down here, where you're supposed to be at for your top dead center there's two copper links one here and here and one here and here that goes to show you that when the dealer put it in he got the gears lined up but he never lined the chain up correctly so when you do this make sure you take your copper links top dead center there's your dimple split it one link to the left one link to the right if you do that your links up here and your dimples should line up properly.